one. Okay, uh, looks like things are ready to go. Um, hello and welcome to The Amazing Actors, where we bring some of your favorite actors. My name is GoldPiplup64, you can call me just GP64, and today we're doing a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind themed episode. Today, we've got the voice of Guido Mista. So why don't you introduce yourself? Um, just give you your name, um, what other uh, roles people might know you from, and anything else you want to say before we begin. Yeah, sure. Um, for those listening in, my name is Sean Chiplock. I'm a professional voice actor who's been living in Southern California uh, since around June of 2012. So pretty close to almost a decade at this point. It's, it's really unreal to think about considering I'm about to turn... Uh, I've almost spent like a third of my life here at this point. Um, I, I've done voiceover for video games, for anime, mostly video games, but you might have heard me as the roles of uh, Rain Schwarzer in Trails of Cold Steel, Mishima Yuki in Persona 5, as you mentioned, Guido Mista and his stand Six Bullets in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind. Um, a really big one that most people know me as is Rivali and Teba from uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, although I did also voice the Great uh, Deku Tree, which I find is funny because uh, the Great Deku Tree is the originally the only role I was cast as, and then the two bird boys were added later. So the ones that everyone recognizes me for from that game were not the ones that I started out voicing. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, um, I'll just let you know how this will go. So um, we have uh, two parts of the show. So there's the first half where we're going to be doing all the JoJo's related things. And then the second half is just going to be questions about you and your other roles. And okay. um, in the middle, um, we'll have a halftime show where uh, you'll be doing quizzes about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. We'll see how all that right. goes. I'm probably going to do absolutely terribly, but <laughs> I will still do my best anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, if you're ready, let's begin. Yeah, sure. All right. So, our first question is from XD-Walkstar, and they ask, how did you get the opportunity to voice Mista? Um, so... It, it, this may seem like a bit of an anticlimactic answer, but it's very important to know, especially for anyone who wants to get into the industry. Uh, usually what happens, uh, at least in Southern California, or at least in the Los Angeles area, is you will have studios that um, handle the dubbing. They, they, they bid, in most cases, they bid against each other uh, when reaching out to clients saying, we would like to handle the dubbing for your project. I'm going to go off on a tangent. I'm going to try and, and actually work down the process. Mm -hmm. So... A client gets a the rights to a show. Like, let's say that they, they earn the rights to uh, Avatar The Last Airbender or something like that. Or I'll go with an anime that's being dubbed. Let's say they get the rights to uh, Berserk, like that 2016 anime. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, we have the, we have the rights to, to publish this show, and we want to do a dub of it. We want to release it in English as well as Japanese. We're going to pick a studio to handle the dubbing for us. And they will, they will basically reach out and they will say, you know, we're going to be working on this project. We'd like to get quotes from studios on how much they would charge us to handle the dubbing and the recording to do an English dub of this. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have all of the, these English dub studios or these uh, studios that do English dub will put in their bids for how much they will charge for the work. Now, that could be PCB Productions. That could be Bang Zoom Studios. That could be Studiopolis. That could be Dubbing Brothers. There's literally dozens within, you know, uh, Los Angeles so um, and the, the client will pick which dubbing studio, whose quote they want to go with. And they'll say, okay, you guys will handle the dubbing. Um, and then the dubbing studio will reach out to their people. They'll contract an engineer, they'll con uh, contract, you know, a director, a casting director. Um, and they often will have a roster of voiceover talent, uh, just a list of talent that are registered with them for auditions. So in this case, since it was Bang Zoom handling the dub for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Bang Zoom has had me on their talent roster for quite some time. You know, we got to know each other back in 2009 when I did AX Idol, and I officially started doing auditions and workshops with them um, when I moved out in 2012. So I've been on their list for quite some time. Since I'm on their talent roster, if there is a project that they come uh, 
into contract with, and there is a role that the casting director who works there thinks I might be a good fit for, they will send out the character audition sides to me at the time that they're doing casting for the show or for the game, and I will submit my auditions for it. Mm -hmm. now, that's a really big... Um, that's a really big answer to give to that question, but the reason why is because that is pretty much the process for any game or anime that happens in this industry over the overwhelming majority of the time. That's how the auditions happen for Breath of the Wild. That's how they happen for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. That's how they, uh, an exception was Persona 5. That was only because the company that was in charge of casting it had enough confidence in my ability to portray Mishima Yuki that they said, we would like to cast this person as this character and just bypass the audition process for this character. Is that okay with you? If the client had said no, then they just would have auditioned me the same as everyone else did. So that's how I, that's how I got the opportunity to audition for Guido Mista. And then, of course, in this case, the client said, okay, that the, either uh, the dubbing studio recommended me or the client said, I like this voice the best for this character. Please cast this person. And that's how I ended up with the role. Dang, that, that was really insightful. Thanks for that. Of course. Okay, um, we're going to move on to our next question, which is from right. Bees Churger. Uh, asks, what do you think about I like about that name. That's, that's pretty funny. I'm sorry, I talked over you. What was the question? Oh, sorry. Um, what do you think about Mista in general? Um... Mista is probably one of my favorite roles I've ever played. Uh, there are roles that are more meaningful to me in regards to, like, challenges that I had to overcome. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I I love, you know, I just think back to all the times that I've recorded for him. Any time that he gets to have his intense internal monologue while he's thinking about what the bad guy happens to be doing and what this means for the group, it's... Uh, JoJo's Bizarre, I've described JoJo's Bizarre Adventure as ADHD the anime, um, and, and a lot of people have agreed with me. And even though Guido is, he isn't the mo the craziest member of the group, like I would say even Narancia has higher highs and lower lows than some of the other characters. Um, when Guido gets intense, he gets confidently intense, and it is really fun for me to be able to portray that kind of role. So I'm just super, super grateful for all the ch chances I've had. I'm grateful that he's a very recurring character, um, not to give spoilers on members of the group who don't happen to stick around as long as he does. Um, and, and he's just a blast. He's an utter blast. And I, I have not seen anything except overwhelming support for uh, the quality of my performance or, or for the feedback people give of my performance of the character. So it's just good feels all around. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, I also should have mentioned, uh, for the people who are watching this, I'll have time codes so you can skip to different parts of this um, just in case if you want to avoid spoilers. We'll make sure we don't say anything spoiler related, but um, you can always skip to different parts of this uh, video. So yeah, just want to let you guys know. Um, yeah, I I really love Mista too. I, like, I remember years ago, before I even got into JoJo, I saw Mista before, like, in a manga panel, and I was like, ooh, that guy looks really cool. I was like, sweet. Mm. And then, when I heard that you were voicing him, I was like, oh, shit, because, um, I was, like, very, um, I was very familiar with you because of, um, the roles of, like, Mish uh, Mishima, um, Rivali, right. and all those people. I was like, oh, shoot, he's voicing him. Okay, this will be very interesting. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I really enjoy him because um, he's, it's hard to describe his vocal placement. He's a little bit lower than my normal speaking voice when I'm excited, as you can tell. He's, you know, probably closer to when I'm like a little bit tired or if I'm just trying to relax. Like you can hear how my voice drops down closer into my baritone mm -hmm. and, and Mista is a little, he's around here, but a little bit more projected. Um, maybe not that low. Uh, but he he's kind of like oh man he's so interesting to describe because i've had intense characters that are even lower pitched and guido's just kind of like in between he's as intense as subaru without being as high pitched but he's not as low and he's not as baritone as some of the more aggressive roles that i've done so he's an interesting middle ground but he's never really been a hard character for me to fall into vocally <laughs> yeah i i 
I definitely, like, understand that. Because, like, when I heard um, Misa, I was like, wait, wait, is that really Sean? Because, like, that is not someone like, <laughs> like, well, to me, at the time, I was thinking of Mishima. So I was like, wait, that, wait, that's Sean? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, whoa, okay, that, that is definitely weird. Um, <laughs> so, uh, moving on, um, we have a question from HeroBrain78 underscore YT, um, asking, so, uh, Sean, what was your favorite line, uh, from Misa that you've said? Uh, the closest I've come to breaking character and laughing in the middle of take, because I've said some really weird stuff. I've said some really inappropriate stuff as a character. Um, and, uh, I've done it with a straight face and not really been affected. Um, but when he did the whole, uh, you better keep a good lookout on your other eye. You, uh, you get that, you bobble-headed turd burglar? The first time I said bobble-headed turd burglar with that intense mafioso seriousness, I came <laughs> extremely close. I think I still cracked a smile as I said it, and I think that actually helped the performance a bit. But I came insanely, cl uh, insanely close to corpsing and, and breaking my, my performance and laughing in the middle of the take. Yeah, I, so. I would not blame you on that one. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that sounds that there, does really sound there, fun. There are several others like like I love the fact that I got to go falsetto during the uh the the Giorno heals Mista scene that everyone's very familiar with. Um <laughs> there's some lines from other episodes that are coming up that they're not necessarily absolutely ridiculous or particularly uh out there in terms of the words that he says. But it's just what he says and how he says it combines together to create a really interesting experience. I, it's it's because of his personality that these phrases are so entertaining. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, here's a very, very serious question from the Meme Lord 4816 asking, when's part six, huh? When is part six? Uh, part six is the one with Jolene Cujo, right? Yep. Okay, that is definitely a question you'd want to ask uh, Kira Buckland rather than myself, because I know more than anything else how how huge a fan of that uh, part she is. I'm actually worried for her because just because we want to voice a character isn't a guarantee that we will get to voice a character. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know she's capable, but I know she would also be absolutely crushed if she didn't get the chance to play Jolene. So... <laughs> I don't know when part six is due out. I've heard good things about it. I've been solely focused on part five because that's what I'm voicing for at the moment. But uh, if there is anyone that you would want to ask about part six, it would be Kira Buckland. Mm. Um, so I would keep that in mind when you are looking into interviewing other actors. If you want to do like a follow up where you ask that same question to somebody else. Uh, that, that was just a, a meme question, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, is is there like a is there like a a meme of constantly asking when the next part is out regardless yeah, of whatever yeah. the current part is? <laughs> Sorry, I was oblivious to it. No, 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 it's all right. <laughs> I, I was just wanting to see how you react. Um, anyway. <laughs> oh, I that's my fault then, because I'm like when I'm in interviews, I like take interview questions seriously. If they're joke questions, give joke answers, and <laughs> so I didn't recognize that it was a joke question. No, no, it's all right. Um, anyway, um, the next question from Hera Gregg, I, I hope I said that right, asks, um, who is your favorite jo uh, JoJo slash Joe bro? Oh, man. I... I like different. I like a lot of different characters for a lot of different reasons. Um, I believe I said Polnareff was one of my personal favorites, just in terms of his design and the way that he acts. Um, uh, Grandpa JoJo is definitely a favorite just because of the egregious English phrases. Um, my smash friends and I have quoted him to each other so many times at tournaments. Um, so he was an actual, uh, bonding point for some of us back <laughs> when the earlier parts were first coming out. Uh, trying to think of one more, uh, who, what's the Jojo stand. That's basically a pterodactyl. Ter uh, what? I was like pterodactyl. What? <laughs> Isn't it? It's it's Horus, right? Oh, yeah, Horus. Yes, Horus. yes, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oh, because because it, he's bound to Pet Shop. Oh, because Pet Shop is oh, is one of the actual. Yeah, yeah. The Pet Shop, the user, and then Horus, the stand. Like, mm -hmm. I really like Pet Shop because bird. 
I'm I'm uh, socially obligated to be a fan of birds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially with Rivoli. Oh boy. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I definitely love Polnareff too. Uh, Polnareff is like my second character, or like second favorite character. Iggy is my number one because I just love Iggy so much. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, honestly, my favorite, uh, JoJo and Jobro, definitely, um, Giorno and Bruno. Oh, love those two so mm. much. Oh, 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 uh, uh, Bruno, uh, Bruno, Bucciarati, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bucciarati is, I just like saying his name during the dub, is Bucciarati. I get to roll the R's sometime, and his voice is, oh, heavenly, so <laughs> heavenly. Yeah, definitely. Man, I, I love Bruno so much. He's such a good character. Um, anyway, um, so here we have a uh, voice request. However, this one, uh, it's pretty long because it's very infamous. Um, they asked if you could do the Yoshikage Kira speech, but instead replace uh, Yoshikage Kira with Guido Mista. Oh, man. Uh, do we Do we have... Uh, what the text for his monologue? Are you able yeah, to post yeah, that right it. now? Um, just give me a sec. I'm gonna try and. Uh... Oh gosh. Okay, this is gonna mess up the display a bit. But I'm gonna try and. Uh... All right. All right. I think. Um. Okay. I think oh. this is it. Uh. <clears throat> oh. Okay. So, first I need to get into voice for Guido Mista. My name is Guido Mista. I'm 33 years old. My house is in the northeast section of Morio, where all the villas are, and I'm not married. I work as an employee for the Kami Yu department stores, and I get home every day by 8 p.m. at the latest. I don't smoke, but I occasionally drink. I'm in bed by 11 p.m., and I make sure I get eight hours of sleep, no matter what. After having a glass of warm milk and feeding my stand six bullets and doing about 20 minutes of stretches before going to bed, I usually have no problem sleeping until morning. Just like a baby, I wake up without any fatigue or stress in the morning. I was told there were no issues in my last checkup. I'm trying to explain that I'm a person who wishes to live a very quiet life. I take care not to trouble myself with any enemies, like winning and losing. That would cause me to lose sleep at night. That is how I deal with society. And I know that is what brings me happiness. Although, if I were to fight, <laughs> I wouldn't lose to anyone. Dang, round of applause. <laughs> That was really good. Um, okay. <laughs> we have another voice request, but this one's incredibly dumb. Um, Scooter1477 for, uh, asked if you can say the number four. Uh, as myself or as Guido uh, Mista? As Mista. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would not wish that evil upon the boy. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you people? trying to cause me pain and suffering <laughs> great that that's honestly that's yeah, give exactly me a second how i thought he'd say it anyway um and uh, funnily enough we're moving on to the last question we have for the jojo related section um so the final question from aesthetic catman um asks how did it feel to deliver on the Jorno that small field? delay? Uh, I like to generally grab the packages as they show up, so there's no risk of them getting lost or anything. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. We're all good. You can keep going. Oh, okay. Um, so <laughs> we have a question from Aesthetic Catman asking, um, how did it feel to deliver on the Jorno Healed Mista scene? <laughs> <laughs> um so i i knew going into that scene that that was something a lot of people were looking forward to uh and i am someone who likes to be a crowd pleaser so you know i take great pride in the work that i do but if i know that there's a specific scene that everyone is looking forward to from a show that's already like aired in other countries i will take special care extra special care to make sure that i give that scene or those lines the attention they deserve so um you know, I, I was already familiar with the context of the scene. You know, I've done adult work stuff in the past, so I wasn't opposed to that sort of thing. Um, and I also knew that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, especially Golden Wind, is all about hamming it up and exaggeration. So um, 
I forget whether it was purely my own choice or if it was a recommendation by the director that I agreed with, but I kind of always knew towards the end of the episode that I wanted to like hit falsetto. Like, um, I, it reminded me of the, the bit from, it was either Robot Chicken or Family Guy, where the guy's getting a massage, and then he goes, lower on top of a smoky. <laughs> I want, and, and that's, that's the kind of angle I wanted to take with it. So, yeah, I, I, I hammed it up, I went falsetto, and um, seeing everyone on Twitter comment about my dulcet tones was absolutely worth it. <laughs> yeah, that... Um, that scene is a, it's very good. Um, like when I first watched it in Japanese, I was like, w whoa, well, okay, okay. <laughs> so I knew right. when the dub came out, I was like, oh no, this is, this is going to be one of those scenes, isn't it? Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, we got, uh, through all the JoJo's questions a lot quicker than I thought we would. Um, <laughs> Um, we're going to move on to our halftime show. Now, originally I was going to do all these cool um, display things, but um, I figured out that OBS just did not want to do that. So I'm just going to have to do it just through a call. I was going to originally just do like screen sharing and stuff like that, but yeah, I guess that's not going to work okay. anymore. So that's fun. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to do a quiz. Um, so uh, here's um, the rules. So we're going to be playing... Do they know their stuff? JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind Edition. So. Oh boy, I'm about to lose so much cred off of this. <laughs> um, so here's some things to know. Um, there are ten questions in total, and the order is determined by difficulty. Um, there are four easy questions, three medium questions, and three hard questions. Each question okay. gets you two points, and if you get them wrong, you lose those same amount of points. Um, oh, I'm gonna be in the. I'm easily going to be in the negatives. I'm going to be in the negatives. <laughs> um, half points are allowed to be given because there's there's technical answers here. Like, yeah, technically this happens, but it's not exactly the answer I'm looking for. So that's what I mean by technical answers. So half points will um, right. Te technical answers will give you half points. Um, uh, what else? Oh. If you get fifteen out of if you get fifteen out of twenty points, uh, you officially win the game. Um, if I get fifteen points, yeah. If you get fifteen, you officially pass the quiz. You win. Not gonna happen, but I'll shoot for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, there is a special item that I'm willing to give throughout the quiz, and it's called the clutch save. If you um if you get a current a uh, correct answer streak of six, you'll be able to receive the special item, which allows you to get one free question. So just essentially free points here. These are a lot of of perks that I'm almost guaranteed to not get, but I'm glad that they're there for the taking. Yeah, and if you do choose not to use it, you'll get five extra points at the end. But we'll see. We'll see. Um. So are you ready? I am. All right. Not, but let's go. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on to the easy questions. So question one. Um, so I'll give you, like, the answers before you're, like, or not answers, but wait. Yeah. So it's going to be multiple, um, multiple, uh, like, oh, frick, I forget what it's called. Multiple. Uh, anyway, there's multiple answers, and you just have to choose one of them. Multiple choice? Yeah. Yeah, multiple choice. Gosh. I, no, no, well, is there more than one correct answer? Like, could it be A and C, or is it just there's multiple um, options to pick it can, from? It can depend on certain questions, but yeah, this one definitely has okay. two correct answers. Um, okay, so question number one. Who was the first person Misa fought? A, Mario Zucchero slash Soft Machine. B, Sale slash Craftwork. C, Prosciutto slash The Grateful Dead. Or D, Skolipi slash Rolling Stones. Okay, so it wasn't Rolling Stones. What was the third choice? Um, prosciutto. Prosciutto. It wasn't Prosciutto. I'm trying to remember the sequence. Okay, so the first two were uh, uh, Zucchero or Arts and Crafts? Yeah, A was Zucchero um, okay. and B was uh, Sale and Craftwork. If I, if I recall correctly... Um, 
by the time Mista fights arts and cra uh, uh, craft works or arts and crafts, mm. um, he's already on the mountainside. So if I if I work backwards, I'm using Moody Jazz right now to try and, and work <laughs> my way backwards. Uh, they go down the mountainside, chases uh, uh, Sale out of the radio house. But that's after they've already arrived on the island, so they had to arrive to the island first, which means they would have fought Zukero because it was en route to the island that they had to deal with everyone getting uh, sucked into the alternate version of the ship. So is A your answer? Yes. Well, that is incorrect. It was what? <laughs> Sale. <laughs> How was it Sale? Sale was the oh. first... Yeah, oh, the that's first right. He, he actually fought. I guess it doesn't Misa actually fight. during the uh, Zucchero whole thing. Ah oh, man. Well, if it's a one-sided fight, it's still a fight. Like he goes to check it out, and he ends up getting sucked in. But I, I guess on a technicality, that's correct. Yeah. Um. Technically, uh, the technical answer I would have given you was uh, D. Scolipi and Rolling Stones, because that was technically like. Because that whole thing was a flashback before the whole story actually begins. So if you would have said Scalipi and Rolling Stones, I would have given you technical points here. What do you mean it what do you mean it was a flashback? Um, so the last episode is when um Scalipi and Rolling Stones shows up. Um so right after oh, um I guess this is spoilers, but uh, anyway. Before uh, they show the ending where um, Giorno becomes uh, the gang the gang star, um, they have a whole episode that uh, takes place right before um, like the whole events of the whole story. So it's like before Giorno Jinx, uh, Jinx, uh, joins the whole gang, and there's a oh. mission right before they meet up, and Scolipi um, is this guy who um, like they uh, Bruno gets a report from someone. Uh, that um, their daughter is being uh, was killed by this guy who had a big rock, aka Rolling Stones, mm. and this was before um, they went on to fight. Um, like, oh, Lush, I see. Yeah, so we got we got trick answers within trick answers. <laughs> yeah, basically. So yeah, um, I would have given you that too. So yeah, uh, still at zero points. <laughs> Let's move on to. Uh... Oh no! Don't I lose? Uh, don't I lose a point? Isn't it negative one now? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> like, yeah, like I would just let you be at zero points, but if you want to go down to negative points, you can. <laughs> it's up to you, man. You're the one running the quiz. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be at zero points. You didn't. You didn't get the points, so okay. you just stay zero. Um, moving on to question number two. Um, why does Mista hate the number four? Is it A, there were four cursed slices of cheesecake? B, as a kid, he could only eat four types of food? C, friend got his eye clawed out by a kitten of four? Or D, forced to watch his parents lose all their fingers? Uh, I'm going to say friend uh, had got his eye clawed out by a kitten of four. Is that your final answer? Yep. Well, you are correct. <laughs> Finally. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that, that one is like is literally in the first episode Misa gets introduced in. So <laughs> that one's a very uh, common thing to know about him. But um, anyway, yeah, you got two points. So now you're, um, you have two points. <laughs> yay. Um, <laughs> yay. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to question three, um, the question right before the last easy question, so that'll be fun. Um, this one has, two, um, there's one technical answer in this question. So, okay. um, question number three, how many members of Passione are there? Is it A, five, B, eight, C, six, or D, seven? Oh my god, I'm not even going to push for the technical uh, answer on this. Um, and Giorno, Giorno, Narancia, Fugo, uh, Mista, Bucciarati. So I know there's at least five. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Mista, Abacchio, Narancia. Mista, Abacchio, Narancia. 
uh, I I should I need to do it either by their last names or their first names. So mm-hmm. Guido, Fugo, Bruno, Giorno. Guido, Fugo, Bruno, Abacchio, Giorno. So there's six. There's at least six members of Passione. Mm-hmm. Um, there's five at one point because of what happens. So it depends on whether it's the end of the series or the beginning. Uh, but I'm going to go with the safe answer and say six. Is that your final answer? Yep. Well, you are correct. You got the full points on this one. Your technical All answer right. was five. Yep. Yeah. Um, not going to say what happens, but there is a point right. where in the second half, one of them decides to leave. Not going to say who, but that would have been. And one of them, answer. there's also a point where one of them unwillingly decides to leave. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So we could even go further than that and say four. <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to do the start of, of the second half. But yeah, okay. so now you have four points. So you're on a two answer uh, win- winning streak. So All right. let's see how you do. Now, finally, we're going to um, go on to the last easy question. And this one is surprisingly easier than I thought it would be. Um, this one has no technical answer here. Um, question number four. Which number gets bullied the most? Is it A, number five, B, number three, C, number one, or D, number four? Which which bullet gets bullied the most? Yes. Uh, it's number five because number five was always treated as if he was number four even though we skipped over the number and he gets bullied incessantly by number three is that your final answer yep it's correct i'm not gonna even play it up you you know you're <laughs> i would be upset with myself if i got that wrong somehow yeah oh my gosh yeah i, I love number five love numbering um uh, okay now we're moving on to medium questions these ones are All right. are going to be very much like very specific. They're very very specific. So you have to get it like very specific. There's like not even a chance that you could go a little bit wrong with this. All right. Uh, question number five. We're already halfway through the uh, uh, game, so you're on a three answer streak right now. So if you get four more correct, you can get um, the clutch save. Um, all right. Okay. Question number five. Which episode does Trish Una first appear? A, episode 7, B, episode 9, C, episode 8, or D, episode 6? So, 7, 8, 9, or 6? Yes. Uh... <sighs> Am I allowed to know the episode titles? Um, no. Oh man. Seven. I forgot to put those I in. I so it's basically 6 7 8 or 9, correct? Yeah, 6 7 8 or 9. Oh my god. I have no idea. Um just go with a random answer. In general, in general, I'm going to go with episode Seven, because in my experience, it has generally taken about three episodes per arc within the anime. Like, I'm literally just kind of thrown out a number at this point, but I'm I'm going to go with episode seven. Final answer. All right. Well, you are incorrect, unfortunately. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, the answer is episode nine. That, that one oh. is when she first appears. This is right after um, they find the um, treasure that um, Polpo had. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have blamed you. I, w- I was thinking about giving you a hit, and then I was like, mm, probably not. <laughs> <coughs> um, so, yeah, now you've unfortunately lost that streak, so you won't be able to get the clutch save. Right, right. I knew it was going to happen, so I'm not too heartbroken about it. Yeah, unfortunately, that's how it goes. Now this one, this one I debated on putting into the hard questions, so I scaled it back a bit. And so now it's in the medium okay. questions. Um, if you get this one wrong, I won't blame you. Um, question number. Okay, wait. Okay, yeah, no, there are no technical answers here. Um, All right. Question number six. 
What is the full name of the rival team that aims to take down Passione in the first half? Is it La Squadra? Uh, B, Squadra, C, excuse my um, Italian, Squadra Escusioni, or D, Escusioni? Uh, oh, man. <sighs> First group. Um, I know it's called La Squadra. I've heard it say La Squadra. Um, I... I want to say it's La Squadra Escusione because you'd have to say it's the squad, the execution, the execution squad. So you can't just say Squadra Escusione. It'd have to be La Squadra. So uh, I'm going to say La Squadra Escusione. Escusione. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Okay, you are absolutely correct. It was. Yeah. That, it was C. <laughs> I I was like honestly surprised. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Um. I I actually forgot to put the law, but oh well. <laughs> See, uh huh. Yeah. I got you with the technicality this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, while you were saying that, I was like, oh, oh no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I uh I mostly got these off of um like just going through the wiki, just seeing like, oh okay. Um, what could I go for? <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much where I've got all this from. Um, I was... Oh, okay. Um, so this one, there is no technical answer. Okay. Uh, qu oh, wait. Uh, let me think. Okay, so you are at eight points right now. I just had to think about okay. that. Okay. Um, okay. Question number seven. Towards the end of the first opening, who does a Bacchio face towards? Is it A, Mista? B, Giorno, C, Bruno, or D, Trish? Who does, who, in near the end of the opening, who does a Bacchio face towards? Yeah, like, so it, like, as, like, a group end, pose? Like, before the song ends, it's, like, there's a, like, shot of, like, um, a, like, a couple of characters, like, facing each other, so it's, like, Bruno. Right. Uh, like, this is a total shot in the dark, but I'm gonna say probably he's facing towards Giorno just because they butt heads in the show, and symbolically it would make sense um, for him to be at odds with that character. So it might be wrong, but I, just for character uh, personality sake, I'm gonna say um, uh, uh, he's facing towards Giorno. Okay, that's your final answer, right? Yep. You are correct, actually. Hey, yeah, there you go. That, like, I, I put in this question because I was like, hmm, this seems kind of obscure. Uh, but... Honestly, I don't even deserve, I'll take the points, but I don't deserve credit for getting that correct. I, I just have to give kudos to the character designer or the art designer who is responsible for creating that splash for doing it in a way that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I accidentally almost spoiled uh, a co like the answer because like I was talking about who's on each side and I was like, oh wait, I almost said it and you cut me off thankfully. <laughs> so I almost let that out. Um, now we're going into the hard questions. Now, um, the last two are definitely unforgiving and I will not blame you if you get these wrong. <laughs> Okay. Um, I will be very impressed with you if you manage to do it. Not saying that I don't believe in you. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Um, we're going into question eight. Um, oh, wait, no. Question eight and question ten are the unforgivable ones. So this will be okay. kind of interesting. Okay. Um, question eight. What is the turtle with the keys name? Is it A, Myrtle? B, Jean-Pierre Ponereff, C, Coco Jumbo, or D, Key Turtle? It's Coco Jumbo. Final answer. Yeah, you're correct. Then you... Yeah. Like, I, I, the first time I heard that name, I was like, there's no way I'm going to forget this name. That, that might have been a case where you needed to make the multiple choice answers a little bit more silly. But I knew it could be Polnareff. I knew it wasn't just Key Turtle because this is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Anything important to the protagonist has an official name. So yeah. it's it's Coco Jumbo. Yeah, Coco Easy. Jumbo. I didn't even know that until like way later. I was like, wait, what? 
That's its name? Nope. Huh, interesting. I, I, I don't even know how I knew that, but, like, that is something where as soon as I heard it, it was like, that's it. I know that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not gonna give, uh, answers to why Jean-Pierre Polnareff's there, but if you know, you know. Um, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, question number nine. This one might actually be a bit difficult, because, um, their name isn't technically said I don't think in the sh yeah it's not said in the show or manga I believe but anyway question number nine who is Carne a gang member that led Giorno to becoming one B a member of Unita Speciale C a member of Squadra or D name of the man who abused an old lady uh, I'm gonna go with B. I'm I'm just I'm only saying this because I don't think it's A or C, and I don't know much about the character. But uh, I'll, I'm gonna go with whatever the B. Uh, no, no, whichever the answer was. Uh, which was the one that said he's a part of a certain group, not La Squadra, but the other. One. Uh, yeah, that's B, a member of Unita Speciale. Yeah, yeah, I'll go with that. You are correct. Holy I, shit! I didn't know his name was Carne, but yeah, um, he's the one with notorious B I G. That <laughs> that one supposed throwaway guy, yeah, that one's interesting. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so far, um, you are, I think, pretty close. Um, I think you're pretty close to getting fifteen out of twenty. Oh shoot! Oh, like I, if I get fifteen questions correct out of twenty? Uh, no. If you get fifteen points. Oh, what are we at right now? Um, that's what I'm trying to check. So, got... Okay, question two correct. Uh, question three correct. Question four. Uh, question... Okay, so... I'll have to tally that up a bit later. But, um, we're moving on Why? to... Why? Well, if I'm at 15, you said I, I automatically win if I hit 15, right? Uh, well, it's not automatic, but as soon as you no. get past um, question ten, then you um, then the points will add up, like then we'll add up the points, and then you'll be declared whether or not you're a winner or not. Um, let me count for a sec. Um, uh, dang it! Why is my computer messing up? Um, Okay, you're at 14. If you Let's do it. Of course, I'm going to get this close, and then I'm going to absolutely generously fail the next several questions and end up back in single digits, but let's see what happens. We're on to the final question, actually. <laughs> so if you manage to get this one right, you officially get onto the leaderboard. Let's see. All right. This one is actually unforgivable. I don't think they even say it in the anime or manga. So I do, okay. not, bl I do not blame you if you get this one wrong. Okay. All right. The final question. What is the first name of Dopio? Is it A, Vinegar, B, Angel, C, Arancini, or D, Tiramisu? What are the choices again? Okay, your your um, answers are A, Vinegar, B, Angel, C, Arancini, or D, Tiramisu. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of whether it's a, a cast-wide thing that the names are based on, or if it's... Uh... Because I know La Squadra was basically named after, or one group was named pretty much after food. Yeah. I know, uh, so I think it's it's based on group. Mm -hmm. But I, I can think of a good reason for each of those names. Angel seems a little too on the nose, but I'm like willing to pick it. C seems really obvious because it's Italian, but that's exactly why I'm scared to pick it. Um Tiramisu, for the same reason, sounds silly, but that's why it might be it. And then Vinegar, 
is also um oh man i'm i'm stuck between i'm stuck between vinegar and uh Man, I can't pick for any of these because, like, there's there's reasons for me to believe for for all of them. I don't think it's tiramisu. I don't think I don't think they would use a Japanese word for the Italian uh, version of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So I'll write out tiramisu. I I'm gonna go with Angel because of the split personality thing. Um... Yeah, that's that's my final answer. Okay. I I wish I could end it in a drum roll, but um you are incorrect. It is not Angel. Yeah. Angel yeah. Aran Arancini and Tiramisu were the throwaway questions. The real answer is vinegar. I Oh my god. It's always the plain one. It's always the one that seems the least likely. I, I played a jackbox game the other day where like the most bland answer ended up being the correct one and i fell for it every time so this is no different dude i i didn't even know that until i was going through the wiki and i was just like trying to find questions and i was like what what wait 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 he has a first name i always thought mm -hmm. Sophia was his first name so i absolutely do not blame you for getting that one wrong because that one is just a very obscure thing that even i was just like what what oh okay that that's very interesting um yeah i had no idea about that but yeah um we managed to get through it um even though you didn't get to um you know win you still managed to get very close so mm -hmm. i'll give you that you you did um you did manage to get past um that <laughs> you yeah. gave, you should honestly give yourself some more credit because you managed to get past some of the, even the hard questions. I, I did do better than I thought I would, so I will I will I will take that to heart. But I am upset that I got literally that close, and I probably would have hit it right before that question if I hadn't gotten the first one wrong in that technicality. So I'll just have to live with that shame. Yeah, some of those questions were unfor <laughs> unforgiving, and yeah, I don't yeah. really blame you. But, you know, I got to make this hard, you know? For sure, for sure. It was a decent challenge. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to move on to the second half where we just talk about you in general and your other roles besides JoJo. So for viewers who wanted to see uh, JoJo-related things, um, this is pretty much where it ends. Um, thank you if you just came here for JoJo. Um, if you want to stick around for others, um, I would be very happy for that. So, um Let's move on to the second half, where we talk about um, you in general. So, okay. Um, all these questions were uh, made by me, because nobody really asked uh, for you specifically. So, um, I just decided to ask questions. Um, so, uh, the first question is, how is the name Sonic Mega born? Uh... <laughs> When I was much younger and I was trying to create a username for the IGN forums, and because you had to create a username before um, you could post on them in the first place. And, you know, I'm, I'm a young kid. I'm a young teen. So I had not much creative power in my brain. And I went with the first thing that came to mind, which was to take uh, the two names of two of my favorite or the take the names of two of my favorite video game characters of all time and smash them together. So we had Sonic and Mega Man, the blue blur and the blue bomber. Um, and it worked out in my case because for some reason it was unique enough that I was able to just put in that username without having to add numbers or underscores or tildes or X's or any of that superfluous stuff. So I just ran with it. And I'm fortunate enough that in pretty much all the major uh, accounts that I've had in my life, Sonic Mega has not been taken. And it's and the only time I've had to use an alternative version of it is often when I already did sign up with Sonic Mega, and then forgot my login information, and then my my backup email was either outdated or not in use anymore, or I didn't have the login for that, so I was basically forced to make a new account. So it's it's a blast from my past that continues to survive with me to this day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. 
I, I'm very confused here. Okay, so your avatar in Discord is from Mega Man Legends, but your stream layout is based off of Mega Man Battle Network. I'm so confused. Which is your favorite Mega Man game? Yes. <laughs> that's, that's the answer, is yes. I, I love Mega Man Legends because of the fact that it gave Mega Man a voice that I'm a huge, huge fan of, and just because of the way it played in general. And the voice acting in throughout the uh, entire game is really enjoyable. A lot of replay value. Uh, Battle Network is absolutely incredible. One of my favorite franchises of all time. And I am of the camp that is waiting impatiently for a collection to be announced for Switch or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I played the classic series over and over. I had the anniversary collection. Probably the only one that I'm not huge on. or And I don't mean that negatively. I just mean I haven't played it as much as other people have. Would be the X and the ZX series. Mm -hmm. um, but even Mega Man Zero I dabbled in throughout college. Mega Man has always been a part of my life, and he's my main in Smash Brothers. And I, there are things about each iteration of him that I'm able to find and cherish and enjoy. Yeah, I, I definitely agree on that. Like, um, I, I'm like, I'm not too big of a Mega Man fan, but I do definitely enjoy Mega Man. Um, I played a little bit of Battle Network. I, I'm like very bad at the actual main Mega Man games. So I mainly stick to like those of of uh, Battle Network and um, like Legends. I tried playing that one, um, didn't get very far, but I definitely plan to finish those games because like I'm just trying to get into the Mega Man groove. Mm -hmm. um, well, good on you, dude. Is what? Which one do you have you been having the most fun with so far? Which one are you looking forward to? Um, I I'm not quite sure. Um, like. I've d I definitely want to, um, like, get into the um, Zero and ZX. Um, oh, yeah, also Zero was another one mm -hmm. I tried playing. Um, didn't get too far into it because, uh, like, I'm not too big of a Metroidvania kind of guy, but I, like, I definitely, like, enjo like, I enjoy those games, like, aesthetically. But, yeah, I've been definitely, like, trying to get into the Mega Man groove. Nice. Um, so... The next question is, um, what is your ideal Mega Man game? My ideal Mega Man game? Mm -hmm. Like, if you could just create um, one. Like, just whatever you want to do with it. They stop making it a video game and they put it in VR and I'm able to run around the internet and battle viruses in VR. Yes. Battle chips, Navi customizing, the whole the whole shebang. Just put, put Battle Network in VR and let me cease existing on this mortal earth plane. Oh my god, yes. I actually agree. Because, like, okay, even though I haven't, like, played much of the Battle Network series, I love it aesthetically. I love everything about it. I just have yet to play through the games. I would love for that, too, honestly. Um, <laughs> um, this next question is, um, if you were cast in a Mega Man game, how would you react? If I were if I were in charge of making a Mega Man game, or no, like if you were like if you were like a voice in the game, like in a Mega Man game, how would you? Oh, know? oh man, um, I I remember Patrick from Mega Man Star Force, the first game. I would love to play both sides of his personality. Uh, I I really enjoy characters with dualities like that. Um, I know a lot of people said you should be a voice for Mega Man, but. I'm one of those people who, because I respect the character so much, um, I I am very picky about what he sounds like, and I don't know if I would be the best fit. Hmm. Maybe for Mega Man X, uh, I, that's one of the cases where I think I'd be a better fit for a Mega Man X iteration. Not necessarily like a classic or a Legends or anything like that. Um, I I Probably one of the Robot Masters, to be honest. I talked about this when I was working on upgrading my studio the other day. But I would love to, um, if I could have voiced like Heatman.exe or uh, probably not Plantman. I would want something a little smoother, a little more foresty. Um, yeah, but uh, Heatman.exe, if you guys want to look it up in Google. He's just very manic. He's very crazy. He's unhinged. And I really, really excel with those types of roles. Mm, yeah. Um, I didn't have this on my, que uh, on my questions list, but I'll ask it anyway. Uh, who's your favorite robot master? 
I love Plantman.exe. Plantman looked goofy as hell in his original iteration in Mega Man 6, but <laughs> when he got that glow up for Mega Man Battle Network 3, holy crap. One of the most useful boss masters in that game for setting up combos. Um, the the difference between him and his original iteration is so stark and so cool as a result. Um, also, Alekman.exe, to be perfectly honest, just this very calm but imposing confidence. Mm. Yeah, um, I... I'm not exactly sure if I had to say, because, like, honestly, there's so many good-looking, like, robot masters. Um, yeah, I, I don't honestly know what I would say. Um, anyway, um, so on your Twitter, it, like, you mentioned that you're the number one West Coast Mega Man. So how did that happen? Uh, I honestly have to give credit to all the people who also lived in Southern California at the time that Smash 4 came out, because I knew from day one when Mega Man was announced that I wanted to main him. I was like, even if he's a garbage character, I'm going to play him so much, I'm going to make him seem like he's good. And in Southern California, a lot of the people who live around here are people who are some of the best players in the world. Like, they go to Evo and they place, like, top 64, top 32. Mm -hmm. People like, um, uh... <laughs> And I can't even think of their names anymore because I've been so inactive from the tournament scene. Um, Larry Lur, Charlie the King, uh, Master Mario, Zero for a while. Uh, TSM Zero lived here for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, K9 and his brother before they moved out to Arizona. Um, I'm trying to think of, of other names. TLTC, who for a while was the best Palutena in the world. Um... Just just so many people who were consistently the, the best in the nation, if not the world, who would show up for these local tournaments. So my method of growing was literally showing up and trying my best to not get my ass kicked and then, of course, getting my ass kicked anyway. But because I was getting my ass kicked by all these really top-level players, when I learned what worked and what didn't, what helped me survive longer or even potentially take games against these top players was often more than enough to hold my own and and have a consistent victory for players that weren't as skilled at that point in time. So what I considered to be average against high-level play was well above average for uh, uh, any play skill level that was below that. Um, and so I was able to keep those skills intact, and they served me very well, uh, both while I was active in the tournament scene and even now whenever I play online and have to account for online latency. So it, it was just a case of, of immersing myself deep in the frying pan from the get-go. And so when I came out, my skills were already quite toasty. Mm, I see. I, I was, like, so shocked um, when I found out that we, like, were in the, like, same time zone. That I was like, oh, wait. all oh, that. Because, like, I'm in Arizona. So, like, like, literally really close to California. So I was like, oh, that, that's kind of a shock. And especially because... I, I want to try, uh, like, try and be a voice actor as well, so eventually going out to California will be definitely a challenge. Um, but, yeah. Um, uh, where was... Oh, okay. So, I remember um, a couple of years ago, um, you were being interviewed by someone, um, and you mentioned the fact that you weren't necessarily a big fan of how, um, like, Persona 5, like, mainly, like, Mainly the combat, like, or I think it was, like, something about, like, how, like, Personas were being fused and stuff like that. And I was just wondering if you ever had a chance to play Persona 5 after that. Uh, no, I haven't. It's, most of it has just because, been because of game backlog, and since I already have a list of games I'm trying to work through, uh, there needs to be good reason for me to add another game to my queue. Um, and Persona 5, for the reasons I described earlier, has not really been huge on my priority list so no i haven't had the chance to get back to it mm, okay um so another uh role that i'm pretty sure you didn't mention before was that um you also voice uh kiyotaka ishimaru and mono uh, taro from danganronpa um yep and my question is if you were forced into a situation like danganronpa what would you do cry cry <laughs> and then probably die <laughs> I, I don't even want to think about that kind of situation just because um, I am someone who operates a lot on, on trust 
uh, and communication mm. and the kind of backstabbing and betrayal that is nature to the Danganronpa games would drive me insane very, very quickly. So I would become way too trusting, way too quickly. I'd form alliances with people who would never, who were never truly interested in forming alliances. I would probably be one of the first to die. I would become a scapegoat. Oh yeah, I feel that too. Honestly, I, I'd probably be the exact same. God, I, I, I honestly don't even know what I would do. I, I honestly would probably like, I'd think about like trying to graduate, and then I'd probably be like, no, no, I couldn't, I couldn't. Because that that is a whole nother situation. God, that that'd be scary. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, you all you also mentioned it earlier, but you also voiced Subaru in Read Zero. So I've co- I have a question about that. So, um, if you had to be easy kind into another world, uh, what would you choose? Oh man, uh, the the Battle Network universe. <laughs> It's, it's like super, oh, that, you know, maybe that isn't the easiest answer. Um, it would be hard to choose between, like, Battle Network because of the way that the net is treated, um, or Pokemon because of the fact that I'd have the chance to, like, because having animal companions that I understand and can, like, cooperate with is a huge, huge deal for me. I have bought games purely off of the fact that they had animal buddies that you could recruit and have fight alongside you. Mm-hmm. Um, so even though I imagine that would be a common answer, I'm not going to go against my gut just for the sake of being unique. So it would probably have to be some universe where I was able to make friends with with animal esque companions. Yeah, I I feel that way too. Honestly, I I would definitely uh, join the Pokemon world because I mean my my avatar is literally just an ice cube mixed with a mix with a Piplup. So I mean. <laughs> Like, I don't know. Like, honestly, uh, Pokemon, love it way too much. I I would definitely mm. join the Pokemon world. Um, so, we're actually on our last question here. And, of course, we gotta save one of the biggest, uh, most popular roles of yours uh, for last. And this one's involving Breath of the Wild. <laughs> so... Okay. Um, if you had to choose between one of the uh, four powers Link is able to get... Mipo's uh, Mipo's Grace, uh, Daruth's Protection, Rivali's Gale, um, and Urbosa's Fury. Which one would you want to have in real life? In in real life, uh, it would easily be um, it would be Mipo's Grace. Um, so uh, let me ask this: Is it something that recharges over time, or um, is it something that I'd have a certain number of uses of, and then it's just gone for good? It's exactly how the games are. So it recharges. Oh my god. It would definitely be Mipha's Grace then. Uh, just because I wouldn't have to be as worried about like life-threatening illnesses or something like that. Sure, I might have to go through the pain of dealing with those illnesses. I couldn't just outright protect myself uh, the way Daruk's protection would allow for. But um, this is kind of dark, but like there's, there's a genetic predisposition in my family for a certain uncurable illness. And I don't know if I have it, but the idea is that if I had Mipha's Grace, then it wouldn't matter because as long as it's active, like is Mipha's Grace, it's a passive thing, right? Where as long as it's like, there's a charge of it, it will automatically activate or do you have to actually use it? Yeah, um, it'll be, uh, it's like passive. So it'll happen whenever um, like something bad okay. happens. Okay, then that's even easier. I don't even have to worry about it. Like even if I were to get the illness, then like I, I'd, I'd have to suffer through all of that. But then as soon as I finally passed on, or I died, Mipha's Grace would bring me back and I'd be good to go. So it's a no-brainer there. Yeah. Like, I mean, honestly, Mipha's Grace is a little too broken. <laughs> but hey, I mean... Agreed. Why not? Very much agreed. Yeah. Um. Anyways, yeah, that, that was our last question. So thank you so much for being here, Sean. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, dude. Thanks for making the time for me. I, I'm glad that I could help out. Yeah, dude. I, I've been trying to get this uh, this entire podcast running, and I'm so glad you were able to, like, actually answer me. Because I know there's, like, some problems yeah. with it, but, like... Was this, was this the inaugural... Was this the, uh, the pilot episode? Is this the first one? Yeah, essentially. Oh, shit! Well, congrats, dude, on starting this up. I'm glad that you put forth the effort. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Um... Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, for those of you who want to follow me, my Twitter is at Sonic Mega. Uh, that's where pretty much all of my role announcements and giveaways happen after I'm allowed to announce that I'm in something. Um, and I would definitely keep an, keep an eye on this year. I know it's been pretty crazy with the pandemic, but um, there's still a lot of stuff in development that I haven't been able to talk about yet, including things that are insanely meaningful to me. Uh, I also have a Twitch channel, which is the same, twitch.tv slash Sonic Mega. Uh, and I try to stream five days a week. Uh, I believe it's Thursday through Monday. Thursday, Friday, so yes, Thursday through Monday, uh, almost always at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, we try to swap out games regularly as we beat the ones we're working on. Uh, I'm trying very, very hard to hit enough average viewers to become partner. Uh, and I would love to have you there. But, you know, thank you very much, Penguin, for having me. Or Piplup. <laughs> Sorry, no I thought I thought about the fact that, that Piplup's pretty much a penguin and the word replaced itself in my no, head. No, 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 it's, but it's thank all you. right, you're fine. Um, thank yeah. you very much, Piplup, for having me. Yeah, uh, I almost forgot to um, ask you if there's anything you wanted to say, but thank you for doing it for me, because I was there actually going to There you go. Well, yeah. I've got a prep for my stream later today anyway, so I'm going to get some food in me. Um, I'm going to probably hop into my room with the air conditioner for a little bit. I think there's an audition or two that I got to take care of, but, uh, yeah, it's time to get back to the work grind. All right. Thank you. And for those who are watching, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you guys in another video. Bye-bye. Take care. Hey everyone. So the video is not quite done yet. This is post episode me wanting to ask you guys a major favor. I've been having problems with trying to find the actors who would be willing to do this show. Sean luckily replied to all, like my question about whether or not wanting to do it. I tried asking other actors, they didn't reply at all. I was so thankful that he did it, but this series might not even continue. And that's why I'd like to ask if you could help me find other actors who would be willing to do uh, like a guest appearance on this show because I want to continue this and I'm pretty sure you want me to continue this so if you can please please help me find other actors who'd be willing to guest star on this show I would really appreciate it it would help continue the series and if you could I, I would be very appreciative of you so that's all I have to say and I hope you enjoyed and now this video is officially done. Bye-bye.